Hello and welcome to Take Refuge 3D and in this video we're going to be talking about ZBrush for iPad and the latest update. So way back when um, it was first announced I did a video saying ZBrush for iPad is going to be amazing because it's got a really robust poly modeler in it called the Z Modeler Brush um, and when it came out the Z Modeler Brush wasn't there so I was kind of wrong in that context but they finally ported it across and uh, we're going to have a look at it today and see um, how this powerful tool for low poly and hard surface modeling has been integrated into the iPad version of ZBrush. So if you want to find the Z Modeler tool, you need to update your latest uh, ZBrush for iPad uh, in the app and you'll find it down here in topology. Okay, so with that out of the way, we're going to not use this, but we're going to go and make a cube so we'll just come down to initialize here and we can make a cube with two by two and we'll just get rid of that and this is uh, normally docked up here I can dock it back but I like to dock it down here near where my thumb is so Z modeler is a poly modeler that's integrated into ZBrush um, designed completely to be used with a stylus um, so the way that it works is you choose either face, edge, or point mode, and there's a bunch of different actions that you can do. And on the left here, um, so there's a bunch of modeling actions, topology actions, and transform actions, as well as selection actions. And then on the right hand side here, we've got in which context we want to use them. So let's say I'm in face mode and I want to do an extrude. And then I would come down here, and if I just wanted to do it polygon by polygon, I could se select the single poly. I'll just turn mirroring off for a second, and we could come away from here, and we can now just start to extrude polygon by polygon. Then let's say I wanted to do some dynamic subdivision, right? So we, we can just turn dynamic subdivision on, and we start to get this. So it's good for organic shapes as well, but... If you know anything about subdivision surface modeling, you'll know about creasing. Okay, so what we can then do is we can come down here and we can choose crease, edge loop complete. And now I know that this has been designed with the hover function in mind, um, but my iPad, which is the iPad uh, Pro M1, the Apple Pencil doesn't have the hover function. So what they've done here is actually really clever. If I use my finger, I can select an aspect without altering it. So I can select that aspect and then I can go and use my pen to do the function. So now I've creased that whole edge there. So you can see as I come in here, I select this and I can select that. And we're starting to get this kind of hard surface um, aspect going on. So I can I've accidentally extruded there. Okay. And we can do the same over here. Right, and we can start to build up these hard surface shapes. So that's kind of cool. Right, so that's uh, one aspect. Um, but it might get really tiresome if you are having to go and d dig through these menus. So if there's something that you use a lot, you can create presets for that. So then if you long press this here for the face, I've got all of these different um, presets that I've made. So I can say inset poly group. Okay. And now I can just inset that one. And now I can go um, extrude poly group island and I can just pull that out like that. And then I could come down here and I could um, uh, crease edge loop or let's say I've got bevel sharp. Okay, so you'll see that if I click on this uh, edge now, um, I'm selected uh, bevel, edge loop complete, and I've set it to four rows and sharp. So now you'll notice that when I bevel this, it gives it this here, but when you zoom in, you'll notice that there's extra edge loops 
uh, in the inside. So now when we use our dynamic subdivision, okay, I'm getting this effect. So now I can bring this all the way up like that. Okay. And we've got this kind of hard surface uh, bevel. You've also got um, Q grid here. So you can bring our Q grid up. We can change it to chamfer. And I think we set that to one. And as you get that, you can start to see that it, it's a bit playing up here because I'm not doing a very good example. But you can have bevels and chamfers here. And you can play with your subdivision to get all sorts of different shapes. So I think this is really cool. And you can start to build up really cool objects with that. So um, let's just go back to here and we'll go extrude polygon we'll turn our mirroring on the x-axis and we can start to and I should now that's because I'm definitely not on the x-axis am I we should have stuck that on the y-axis anyway so but if we pull this out now we'd be able to do something like that um, we can come down and we can um, do bevel sharp again on here around the edge loop and then as we turn our subdivision on we start to get a really cool hard surface shape so this is not a tutorial per se I just wanted to highlight this and I think it's pretty cool um, that we've now got that we can now apply that to that and um, we can delete our lower and then we've got this hard surface object which then we could you know get one of our normal sculpting brushes um, you know and we could start to sculpt this how we like and we could start to do things like trimming off edges and you know get that nice and smooth and it's subdividing to three million polygons and we can start to really get in there with that and do whatever you like okay so not a sculpting tutorial but if you've got an ipad i'd highly recommend learning about z modeler um, it just means that you can model within uh, zbrush without um, having to use a computer that being said, there are some competitors. So um, this is my recording app. Um, so we've got Uniform 3D here, um, which is still in active development. So I've been wanting to cover this for a while, but it keeps changing in terms of the UI. Like there's a way that you can use it with a keyboard and mouse, and then there's a tablet mode. This is really a powerful um, modeler, but I believe the next version is going to um, uh, have a lot more um, functionality. Um, so, or, or it's going to be more well documented and they're going to start solidifying the UI and things like that. So I'll be covering that later on. We've also got, we've got Nomad Sculpt. Okay. Nomad Sculpt is a super powerful sculpting tool. It's also very cheap. It's a great cheap alternative to ZBrush and is really great in a lot of use cases. Um, it's got great painting tools um, and it's got a lot of powerful um, procedural tools under the hood. Um, so this is also one that you should check out. And then we've got Valence 3D, which is also an active development very slow development, but it does have some good poly modeling tools. But quite honestly, I think it needs a, a little bit more time in the oven for me because it just doesn't have some of the things that I really need it to do. Um, very simple modeling and things like that. It's also got a path tracing uh, renderer, as does um, uh, Uniform and Nomad Sculpt 
has a raster engine that's actually pretty powerful and cool as well. ZBrush lacks in that area, but where ZBrush really excels is that we can get these really, like I could probably subdivide this a couple of times, like, um, okay, so at the moment it's letting me get up to 15 million polys. I can change that in the settings, but that is phenomenal. Um, so we can get really, really high poly counts. Um, and still get quite responsive um, feedback. So if you want to get all your little details in there, and, you know, here's some of the orb brushes that I downloaded, um, you know, we can start to add a lot of detail in there very quickly. Um, so recommend checking it out. It is a subscription. It's like 15 bucks a month or something like that. Uh, maybe it's 15 Aussie bucks a month. I can't remember. Anyway. Check it out. See you all in the next one. Tschüss.